fantastic talk today. Um, I think journals have impact factors for articles that we that we publish or we submit. Here is an impact factor of what you do. What you're doing is going to have huge impact on millions and billions of lives. So we really honor you and respect you for what you do. Our next sort of um, uh, section is about lung cancer, and uh, uh, we have two distinguished speakers that really don't need any introduction for this section. Our first one is Dr. Renato Martins, who's from Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. He's a thoracic and lung specialist who's going to be talking about advanced non-small cell lung cancer.
needed surgery alone. So those are that 10 guys out of 20 there that have been cured with surgery and need absolutely no chemotherapy whatsoever. Then you have this group of people here. And those are the ones that are going to have chemotherapy and they're still going to recur and still going to die of their cancer. And I don't want to argue that you push the recurrence into the future by giving them adjuvant chemotherapy. The reality is that the chemotherapy did not cure them. And then you have the between 5 and 10 percent, which is this last group here, that has a huge benefit from chemotherapy because they were destined to have a recurrence and now they don't because they receive adjuvant chemotherapy. However, who are they? We don't know. So we end up treating everybody. And I think that if you present in that way, it is equally accurate, but much more reflective of what happens with a single individual decision, should or should they not get adjuvant chemotherapy for lung cancer. Well, so this absolute benefit of 5 to 10% is clearly not where we would want to be and how can we make this better. So this is a trial that has been published and I'm going to show you the data on it. Uh, it's from the time where we believe that uh, fish made any difference whatsoever and uh, patients with uh, lung cancer that had stages 1b to 3a uh, treated with a curative intent that included uh, surgery uh, were then randomized to be treated with their lotnin or not in its standard doses uh, for two years. And the randomization was uh, two to one. Again, this is everybody. There is no molecular selection uh, for these patients. And as I'm sure you know, the trial was spectacularly negative. There was no difference in progression-free survival with the use of erlotinib in that unselected population. But material was available, so there was an evaluation of the impact of erlotinib among patients that had tumors with an EGFR mutation. And that's the lower curve there, where, as you can see, there is indeed an improvement in progression-free survival which is actually quite substantial in favor of uh, Erlotin. Uh, however, if you look at overall survival, which tends to be the uh, guiding principle of any adjuvant trial, in neither of the two groups there was any signal that uh, there was a survival improvement with the use uh, of Erlotin. So even for patients with an EGFR mutation, in the context of a subgroup analysis, there was no clear evidence that survival was improved. Although it is true that uh, because these agents are very active when uh, recurrence occurs, it would require a significant follow-up to see a survival difference as patients can be maintained alive on EGFR-based therapy. So uh, there is a typo there, as I was reviewing the slides in the back. Um, you know, we talked about, uh, and I, I have some uh, interesting discussions with my colleagues at the SCCA about this. Should really um, overall survival be the only thing that matter in uh, adjuvant trials? I think that if we had, and that's where the typo is, if we had a very well tolerated and cheap therapy, I would postulate that impacting disease-free survival alone would be good enough. Because it's much better to think that you've been cured than to know that your disease has recurred. And um, all things being equal, uh, uh, it's very hard to be with a better quality of life knowing that you have recurrent lung cancer versus not knowing that you have recurrent lung cancer. But as it turns out, that's not the case with erlotinib. It's not cheap and has side effects. So uh, gefitinib was an uh, abstract presented at ASCO, and now it's published in 
the Lancet Oncology. Uh, this trial was done in China, and uh, in this case, uh, patients were randomized, and again, in this case, they all had tumors with an activating EGFR mutation, with the two most common activating mutations. Stage two and three A had an R0 resection, meaning that resection with negative surgical margins, good performance status, and they were randomized to receive 24 months of tefitinib or four cycles of standard cisplatin and venarbi. You know, you read the paper, it's not totally clear what the staging uh, procedures were. You know, they talk about PET CTs, but then they talk about chest or abdominal CTs, and then there is something about an abdominal ultrasound. Um, so it, it's not totally clear. Um, the reason that's relevant is that obviously if you're including patients that have metastatic disease, you're going to have a conversion to no difference because obviously none of them will be cured because they don't have curable disease. They had 222 patients randomized over 31 months. Uh, the vast majority, 64%, had uh, N2 disease um, and 59% uh, were females. As one would expect, uh, at least during the administration of chemotherapy, the fit was better tolerated. And grade three or four adverse events uh, were present in 12% of patients treated with the fit while were present in 